see my code, you just like, create the user interface and then continue to write your application in the browser. Um, this gives uh, some nice features, like um, all elements know like, which um, file libraries they need, so you can just ask all the uh, elements which file libraries they need and just add them automatically so you don't have to um, have to pay attention to all these little details that can just make you crazy or something. Yeah, so um, let's give it a demo. This is a website I created with Seabreeze. Um, on the left you see there is a subcomponent, this is a standard test example from Seaside. Um, you can see some text and you can drag around the text and edit there. Uh, I think the page is And it will um, update both the um, lower part and the upper part. And you know what is great about Seabreeze is you have these elements and if you want to use updaters you don't have to say you have this element there and this element. They would need to be updated if I do this action. Well you can say um, in your code while you run some callback you can say yeah I would like to update this text and in some other method you say let's update like this widget and it collects all these and if the callback returns the web page, it um, returns some JavaScript that says, yeah, update all these elements, and then these elements just render themselves again. So these two uh, paragraphs just update automatically, or you can also use uh, some effects. Um, the editor <coughs> is available down here. Um, there is a editor link. And if you click that, it will open the web page in the editor. And Seabreeze is written in Seabreeze, so you can also edit the interface if you want to. And yeah. Yeah. See. Um, the text that you, you see in the other part. This is a paragraph, oh, it's this one. And it shows a collection. I don't know if you can see this. Um, this is a collection of data and it contains a text and a space. <coughs> Separate all the text. Um, down here you can, you can see there is an aspect it's called all strings. And it sends this message to the application model and it return a collection of strings. And each string is just by using the inner part, which is just two text fields. And this text will send um, display string to the string object and just render this. So all these strings in this collection will just render on the string. Um, you have a drag and drop. And you see there is a passenger and it just sends this message to the object for the passenger and if you drop on this paragraph and this paragraph has a callback at text. As I go into this method, um, we will open a refactoring browser on this method. Do you see the text um, from this object that was dropped comes in in the method and it is added to the string which is the lower collection and all strings the upper collection. This is where you remove the string. They say update the element with ID new text and old text. And this is everything that you have to do to make these two paragraphs redraw without redrawing the whole page. Um, and um, yeah, that's all. The, uh, the method that is called when you click on the link on the, on the right side of the page, this one, is going to 
trigger the effect to toggle it on or off. And it's also just online, it's a trigger effect of the element with ID input text, and use the effect toggle blind. And that's all. It just does it.
resources in fact are entering the new libraries and the correct resources. Uh, it is probably correct, so it's in that in that way. And whenever you try to modify task here, so we can from uh, building cruise ships. You know, and I was I mean, building quite a number of cruise ships, uh, not to be uh, very true, and uh, ships like that. And it was using the tools we had, using the tools other people are using, that they had ideas to make the program like that. And the benefit here is that, first of all, we can work all together on the same document. And that, of course, is, that's the main benefit. You can, you can planify, it's not, Normally, organizations have one guy who does all the planning and he sends out cards to everybody. So, how are you? And the cards come back and then they send them to the planning. That's sort of an ad hoc approach. And this is more this is more like what you could call the portfolio project management <coughs> approach, which you can see a lot of IT businesses, and where you just follow the project up from the beginning to the end. And, uh, last question, do you have? A version, uh, do we have versioning on the project then? Is that what I mean? Versioning. <laughs> versioning. Uh, so, uh, if you need to roll back to some state, or if you need to see difference between one planning state and another one, it's just interest. No, the, the, the versioning is basically what you see through the curves. You see the, the progress of the curves. Okay. Historical. The other thing is that. Of course, what you will need is from a management point of view is that you need, basically, you need the milestones, which you can see here. Basically, when the milestones are within the project tree, and basically, you, as from a management point of view, you would put the milestones, and within the milestones, and get everybody to put and the five stars. Yes. Excuse me. Um, do you capture actual data from the people who would be doing the work on that? Well, that's what. Of course, the thing is that everybody can work on this. Yeah. Okay, so of course, yes, the, the, the contractor can have this program and he can work on it. But for the moment, I did not do all the protection related to do that. Right. So it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not yet administrative power use and things like that. That's not that. 